On January 8th, Vitamin Water closed entries for its contest to win $100,000 by ditching your smartphone for a year. It's an interesting contest, but I'll tell you frankly, I think Vitamin Water should give me that 100K right now. Because if we take June 1st, 2011 as the date marking the moment when smartphones became ubiquitous, somewhat arbitrary I know, but I remember the summer of 2011 as the time when it seemed like everyone had smartphones. If we count from that date, then I've been living without a smartphone for 2,779 days. And that's because I've never owned one. I'm a millennial, born in that fabulous year of 1986, and yet the smartest phone I've ever owned was a Samsung Intensity 2. And my current phone is considerably stupider than that. It's a Nokia whatever, and I use it a few times a week to call or send texts. All of my other digital needs are met by my trusty laptop. So in this video, I want to tell you about my life without a smartphone and why I've chosen that path. But before I get started, I want to make it clear that I am only sharing, not preaching, and I wouldn't judge you or anyone else for choosing to own a smartphone. My wife has one, my parents have them, my friends have them, and I still love and respect those people. To get started in explaining why I've made this choice, we need to establish the costs of owning a smartphone. Now, the monetary costs are obvious. A smartphone isn't cheap, and it's both more likely to break and more likely to be stolen than a brick phone, so the probability of having to replace it is higher too. But to me, the monetary costs of owning a smartphone are insignificant when compared to the costs it would exact on my time and attention. One of the things touted as a benefit of smartphones when they first appeared, you can get online anytime, anywhere, doesn't seem to me like a benefit at all. I find great value in the internet, like everyone else. But overall, I want less of it in my life, not more. And when I use it, I want to be doing so consciously. Unfortunately, practically every digital network we use these days, including this network, YouTube, is not just addictive through some accident of nature, like alcohol or heroin. It's deliberately designed to be addictive. And I would consider myself at the moment to be a semi-recovering semi-addict which means my internet addiction has, I think, always been less severe than that of the average millennial, though still nothing to sneeze at. And for the semi-recovering part, that means I haven't given up Facebook, YouTube, Reddit, and so on cold turkey, but I have recently succeeded in greatly reducing the time I spend on them. I'm sure if I had a smartphone, my success in that endeavor would have been far less. The addictive nature of those networks, combined with the ease of carrying a smartphone with you at all times, makes high costs of time and attention almost inevitable. So then, what about the benefits of smartphones? I'm not such a curmudgeon that I can't see any, and I will talk about them. But first, I want to mention a few features of smartphones that are, to me, simply irrelevant, neither cost nor benefit. The first irrelevance is games. I grew out of video games a long time ago, and I'm not interested in playing any on a smartphone. An occasional match of backgammon on my laptop is plenty for me. The second irrelevance is music. I have music on my laptop and I find that convenient enough. When I go out on the street, I want to hear the sounds of my surroundings and I'm not particularly interested in being plugged into headphones. I had an iPod for about two years in college, but then I got rid of it because I didn't like the effect it had had on my life. My third smartphone irrelevance is photos. And photos. And photos on top of photos. I feel like I get plenty of photos using my big old Canon 70D, and capturing even more on a smartphone would be overkill. So with those three irrelevancies out of the way, let's talk about the benefits I can see in smartphones. Like I mentioned before, practically everyone in my life has one. I've held them in my hands, I've seen what they can do, and I must admit, there have been many times in which I've thought, damn, that was pretty cool. A couple of years ago, for example, I was taking a domestic flight with a friend here in Vietnam. He was able to check us in online, get our boarding passes right on his phone, and because we didn't have any bags to check, we were able to just walk straight to security, show his phone, and go through. Pretty slick. But I don't fly all that often, and really, the time it takes for me to check in the old-fashioned way is a tiny inconvenience. I also see the benefit of services like Uber, Lyft, and Grab. I've used them quite a few times, usually with my wife getting us a ride on her phone. And those services definitely come in handy. But I don't need to get rides all that often. And I found that even in 2019, using a stupid phone to call a taxi still works pretty well and doesn't cost that much. And probably the biggest benefit I see in smartphones is being able to use maps and GPS whenever you go out. In pretty much every big city I've ever traveled to, I've gotten lost at least once. 
If I had a smartphone, that wouldn't happen. And I'd also have an easier time finding interesting things near me. An inarguable convenience, but a very minor one, I think, as are all the other conveniences and benefits I can see in smartphones. Minor, not revolutionary, and to me, they don't add up to more than the costs. Now, if you're sitting there thinking of things you could say to convince me to get a smartphone, like a few more conveniences you could mention to tip the scales over to the benefit side, then I'd like to get a little philosophical for a moment and consider in the bigger picture whether getting a smartphone would make my life better. I think that's a fair question to ask because a smartphone is not a necessity in the way this sweatshirt is. I need this sweatshirt to stay warm. A smartphone, on the other hand, is really a luxury. And I think it's wise for any luxury to ask yourself, does this thing make my life better? So let me give you a list of possible changes in my life which I would consider indicative of improvement, and we'll see if a smartphone would affect them. One improvement would be making more money without feeling overworked. Another would be enjoying my work more, laughing more, having deeper, more meaningful relationships with friends and family, having better, more frequent sex, reading more, traveling more, feeling less stressed, spending more time in nature, learning a new skill, eating healthier, exercising more, meditating, or simply having more time to reflect. Would owning a smartphone help me in achieving any of these changes? It's hard to imagine that it would, and it's quite easy to imagine that because of its distracting glow, it would prove to be a hindrance for nearly all of them. The conveniences of a smartphone could indeed save me some time, but I've found that people rarely succeed in reinvesting that saved time in meaningful activities like those listed here. The saved time usually just gets reinvested in the phone. Even though you might look at exercising more or meditating and say, there's an app for that, I'm skeptical of the utility of those apps, particularly for someone like me who isn't already addicted to his phone. In the case of the Waking Up Meditation app, for example, I think even Sam Harris himself would agree that if you don't already have a smartphone, you shouldn't buy one in order to learn meditation from his app because the device will probably end up being a net drain on your attention, mindfulness, and ability to meditate. So in short, I find it very hard to believe that owning a smartphone would actually bring more happiness into my life. Now, does all of this mean that I'm going to spend the rest of my life swimming against the current of technology and refusing to ever buy a smartphone? That's hard to say. I can imagine in 10 or 20 years, the stupidest phone you can possibly buy might still be pretty damn smart because the technology will have become dirt cheap and there's simply no market left for something as simple as this. And perhaps smartphones will become so truly ubiquitous that it's practically impossible to escape the expectation that you have one and even quite necessary services will be structured around them so deeply that not owning one makes it difficult to even get through your day. If that situation comes to pass, I suppose I'll break down and buy one. But that situation hasn't come to pass yet. A smartphone is not necessary in the year 2019, and I'm living proof of that. I'm 32, I have friends, I'm happily married, happily a father, I manage to make some money, I travel occasionally, I have a few employable skills, I have some idea what's going on in the world, and I don't have a smartphone. When I observe friends, family members, acquaintances, and strangers using their smartphones, and then observe myself not using one, I don't feel that I'm missing out on anything all that great.